frostbite caves, the world filled with all of this stuff and animal enslavement. From the beavers being strapped onto the lawnmowers to the zombies riding overweight dodos, this world is a prime example of animal abuse. Oh wait! This is a video game. I can kill as many of these animals as I want. Starting with day one, we get introduced to two new world gimmicks. Slider tiles and freezing. Slider tiles slide the zombies to a different lane and freezing renders plants useless. Unless you thaw them out using heat or damage. For example, in this level, both of Crazy Dave's nuts are frozen, but using explosive damage, we can free them. Nothing crazy happens this level, but we will face harder levels when we get introduced to new zombies. Why does this guy look so weird, bro? On day two, we get introduced to freezing winds, which freezes our plants. And for some reason, I decided to use kernel pots, which deal little damage. And because of that, we lose two lawnmowers at the end of the level. Day three was a conveyor belt level. Why do they have nine conveyor belts in this world? It makes the game feel boring and repetitive. On day four, we are introduced to the snowball guy. This guy throws snowballs, which can freeze plants. He also holds a massive bonus in his hand. That's irrelevant, so don't get distracted by that. Already, I could feel the difficulty slightly spike. He freezes our plants, which allows the zombies to take two mowers. Day 5 didn't stop me from doing catapults only on a conveyor belt level. I didn't place any bonk joy down this level. Those bonk joy were already pre-placed. Day 6 came with two pre-placed sunflowers, which I didn't use because I didn't need them to beat this level, so they just remained frozen all game. We also have access to the pepper pole. You can fall frozen plants adjacent to it. It can also deal splash damage, kinda like a watered down melon pole since it does less damage. On day 7, we found some very interesting interactions with the sapfling and turkey pole. We found a way to soft flock zombies. Sapfling's slow combined with the fact that the zombies are stuck eating turkey makes the zombie basically frozen in place oh yeah those split peas were pre-placed day 8 was another boring conveyor belt level on day 9 we get introduced to the dodo rider this zombie is just really annoying first of all it can move faster than a regular zombie and has nearly the same bolt as a conehead this makes him a pain to kill with our slow firing catapults day 10 was yet another conveyor belt level no okay let's talk about day 11 this level actually caused me so much mental suffering. First of all, we are limited to two seed slots. Looking back at it, I could have rented a seed slot. Second of all, look at this level design. There is literally no lawn space for us to use. Third, the zombies are actually so annoying. Along with the spam of dodo riders, we have blockheads, which are just tankier bucket heads. After like an hour of grinding this level, we finally beat it. Day 12 was the last stand level, so I decided to create the ultimate setup. As you can see, we have the winter melon and the pepper pole. The pepper pole will fall the zombies frozen by the winter melon, therefore making this the most pointless setup. On day 13, I decided to use sticky bomb rice again to have some fun after just beating day 11. If you didn't already notice, I haven't really been using this guy since he's just too broken and he makes the game less challenging. Day 14 didn't let us pick our plants. On day 15, we had to protect these pepper pole. This level was really hard, so I just used sticky bomb rice to kill all of these guys. Day 16 was a conveyor belt level. Bless me. Day 17 came with some fume shrooms and charred guards. Apart from that, this day wasn't really that interesting. Day 18 was a conveyor belt level. Day 19 came with some frozen plants, such as the cabbage pole. Which, speaking of, you guys wanted me to make a cult raising this guy. We made bully cabbage pole for just being a bad plant, but he's a cute guy, so we love him. Anyways, we used the infinite stall strap to beat this level. On day 20, we have another encounter with the caveman dude, which you might have seen in the earlier levels. He pushes three blocks of ice containing him. He is by far the weakest zombie introduced since catapults can just shoot over the blocks. Hey, yo, he's holding a bone. Day 21 is a conveyor belt level. Hi there, Mr. Weasel Dude. Whatever your name is. Day 22 introduces Mr. Weasel Dude, which when he's damaged, he will spawn multiple weasels. These weasels are slightly slower than the regular chicken zombie. However, they are more tanky. This level was really easy because there were no winds, so we didn't have to use pepper pole. Also, I used sticky bomb rice to deal with the weasels. Bro, the squirrels need to stop stripping. 
the 823 was significantly harder because they just kept on spamming weasels. So after a couple of attempts, I beat this level. Day 24, we had to produce 2,500 sun. Even if we had sunflowers on our side, I still managed to find a way to lose. Anyways, on my second attempt, we passed the level. Day 25 was a conveyor belt level. Come on, no. Unlucky. Where did he come from? Bro, they just <laughs> appeared out of nowhere. Day 26 came with some pre-placed sun shrooms. However, there were three frozen Mr. Weasel dudes on the lawn. This level was a bit hard because the weasel zombies just kept on spawning. Day 27 was really easy. There were no Mr. Weasel dudes in sight. Also, we can just freeze a gargantua now with our plants, which shouldn't be possible since it is one of the strongest zombies in the game. Day 28 was the last stand level. This level was actually really fun. I didn't lose a single plant even though there were some strong zombies in that level. This this goes to show that the catapults can be extremely strong if used correctly. Day 29 didn't let us pick our plants. And day 30 is the final level. Join us next episode in Lost City. Okay, bye now.